Hey guys, this is uh, Luke and Zoe with Muscle Nerds, Hi, MuscleNerds.tv. <laughs> doing all right? Luke and Zoe. And do you know why he's so small compared to what he usually is right now? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah Just because he's been training much in four yeah. years. Yeah, but. Hey guys, so uh, we uh, just spent a couple of days in Breckenridge just on our way down to Albuquerque to see our buddy Steven and uh, we came across uh, the wandering madman here, oh. Jeffrey Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, t you gotta tell us man, tell us, give us the story you told us earlier oh, about your first gig in Austin and yeah. what you do. It's been a crazy adventure. Um, I, as you see the box truck behind you, I built it. Uh, about five years ago, I bought a box truck off of Craigslist and I took a jigsaw to it and I cut all these holes in it, which was really scary. <laughs> but I had no idea what I was doing, but that's the result. And uh, it's, it's been an incredible adventure so far. The first gig I ever had, uh, or the first time I tried to use the truck was down in Austin, Texas. And you know, they're a little, you know, they're a little picky sometimes with, uh, with musicians playing on the street and whatnot. But I managed to shut down 6th Street all by myself. <laughs> Had about 200 people standing in front of me before the police came through and decided to break it up. They uh, uh, they gave me a $250 ticket that night for amplifying without a permit. They threatened me with jail time if I did it again, which was really, really disturbing for me because I had driven all the way down there. I you know I spent so much time engineering the truck, I didn't think what to do after it worked and I had a whole bunch of people and shut down the street so I failed uh, pretty miserably at uh, negotiating with the police uh, on that incident uh, but I just I did it anyway you know they threatened me with jail time but I wasn't gonna give up so I just found places on the east side man it is yeah. a totally different world over there They're a lot more laid back and I just managed to keep on keeping on but I've been traveling uh, mostly Texas Florida California Colorado those are my main main little homesteads and I try to travel with the geese and go south yeah. for winter and get out of the heat the snow. man and snow no snow and no no hundred degree temperatures for me I do my best <laughs> so that's why we're up here in Breckenridge at what 9,000 feet having a good time man I'm so glad I ran into you guys yeah we're really happy that uh, I came to get my, my morning coffee I can't function without at least one oh, coffee yeah. <laughs> and I saw you and I, I ran back to the hotel I said you gotta get your crap get your crap let's oh, put it in the car we so gotta cool, go back man. to the interview he rushed me out the door That's like so funny, yeah man. it's yeah. like it's early darling it's early yeah. <laughs> he's like I don't want to miss him I don't want him to be gone I'm gonna be so uh, upset if he's so gone I'm gonna have to drive around and find him that's what he said yeah. well, it's, like, it's like we told you we, we, we bought a camera in Dubai oh, to do kind of podcasts or like yeah. v-blogs or whatever people do I and mean, we're really new at this so uh, <laughs> and we just wanted to get our vision out and to kind of show people our travels and cool people that we meet and, and yeah. that's part of our vision what you're doing here with the, the free music and the, the traveling and, and trying to keep keep alive all the all the good old music oh, that yeah. you just the young kids don't know about anymore oh, you know. The, the good old 1960s and early 70s music that we've heard you play all, all morning but, uh, how did that uh, how'd you get into music oh man um, I started really young, and I started, I think, for different reasons than most, and that's probably why I'm still going, because I saw, I was a little judgmental, I'm not going to lie, I saw oh, these <laughs> musicians, you know, at their award ceremonies, because, you know, I lived out in the sticks, we had about five channels growing up, so when the little award ceremonies would come on, glued to the television, and all these great musicians, uh, but all they had to say was, thank you to my manager, thank you to this, thank you to that, and they didn't realize what an incredible opportunity they had to make an impact on someone's life right there. All it, all it took was just a little, a little, uh, I don't know, it, just the desire, you know, it just took the desire to want to make people's lives better and try to uh, prevent unnecessary pain and unnecessary loneliness, you know, all these things, music, you know, at an early age, it, it's what keeps me company, you know, as I'm traveling through this world, I've always got a song in my head and even though I travel alone, I'm never alone when you got these melodies flowing. But I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to change the world. I wanted to help people take better care of this planet that we live on. And I wanted to help people understand that we're all the same regardless of our age, sex, or color of the skin. You know, these simple truths that you think would be obvious by now really still need some repetition. And they need someone, uh, I would think, in a, uh, in a more privileged uh uh, space, you know, someone who can actually, who have people that look up to them, you know, and really, really hang on every single word that they say. There's so much more than 
this outfit or this is my summer home this is that there's there's so much more simple human truths that we can relay through music melody and just simple spoken words so you guys are on the same mission as I am Absolutely. you raise a yeah. very very valid point and we've got the, the same point of view um, just obviously in a different industry but the people in the fitness industry that are predominant figures they're wasting their ability and their reach oh, like man. we completely agree with that and you have the same opinion in the music industry and it seems to be a theme across anybody that's um, of success and that reaches people they just don't they don't make a change with what they're doing like they do it for themselves they're not using their um, notoriety for good yeah. you know and that's what sucks is that they have this huge reach and in our industry people battle left and right uh, about who's right and who's wrong and this and that and all they do is squabble and, and look at my abs and, yeah. look at my abs <laughs> like, honestly that's like, what it's that's like, like it's like look at me this is what I do it's this all is... money 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 and it's, a, it's a, gotten to a ridiculous point and that's not what we're about we don't do it for the money I mean if we did we wouldn't be traveling and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stuff because it's not cheap you know Oh, yeah, you know, so it's awesome we can meet people like you. I mean, this is this is a big deal you're doing here, and you don't you don't see this. No. I've been traveling. I've gone on four world tours now. This is the first <laughs> time I saw someone with your type of mission that's legit. It's living it. You, you, yeah. you, you're not part of a label. You don't have an agent. You're just driving around and, and doing your thing and spreading good, um, yeah, that's, good vibes. Yeah, that's the the traveling part. Ties. It would be nice. You know, I I thought. It was never supposed to be a, a one-man mission, you know. I just I felt like I was the only one who was really passionate about it for those reasons. But I was hoping over the years I'd be able to bring good people together and just all work on on things together. And the music is just kind of like a a way to reach reach that that point. And it's like once you know, hopefully if I ever uh, reach any kind of success, uh, just my mind just reels with just inventions and things that we can do, simple things that we can do to just make everyone stay. A little brighter and a little a little nicer all around but yeah that's why it's fun meeting people like you guys because you know it, it reminds me that i'm not alone and so often it seems like the world kind of beats you down and it's just like you know that you're, you're you don't belong here you know it's like that's why i called myself the wandering madman it's one of, one of the reasons because i just i felt like i was so out of touch with this world and this reality i just didn't belong and anyone We're who chooses to live in a truck for five years is clinically crazy you know by today's <laughs> standards they, they they don't understand that we get so caught up in our possessions and you know the things that we that we end up man, it's just amazing how much money and from the money how much of our life we spend working for the stuff that we don't really need the most important thing we need are our friends and our family close to us at all times and that's what makes it tricky too because I'm, I'm away from that constantly so it's a constant yeah. struggle yeah. pulling me back it's like why are you doing this why are you out here all alone or why are you putting yourself through this if it was more successful it'd be a little different but in the truck i get maybe you know five to ten hours a week where it works and people yeah. stop and they love it and it's just it's heaven and then the other you know hours of the week you're doing your best to keep positive and you know it's like another good time's coming you just got to keep going and keep the faith and you know so it's, it's tricky that's why i need a dog <laughs> anyone out there should be a puppy <laughs> put some holes in the box and, and we'll, we'll give them a good home but yeah one of these days i hope to have a whole little caravan of dogs and people <laughs> there you go. that all just want to want to spread love together man <laughs> that two two big concepts you just talked about one words that one word that i heard was passion and another one is success like how do you gauge success is it money no what what is success to you and what's passion to you oh man uh, i guess passion would be the same as philanthropy for me is like passion is just the the purpose of being alive like i don't understand the point of, of going on day to day just you know just doing the normal grind or just living for myself or trying to build a bigger estate or this and that like that that doesn't seem to be the point of humanity to me. If you were to think about it maybe a thousand years in the future as we start exploring these other planets and whatnot, and you know, you wonder if we're just gonna go from planet to planet to strip its resources, take what we need so we can keep keep our humanity going. But let's say we were speaking with a, an alien civilization and they were about to wipe us off the face of the planet. It's like, you guys aren't doing good, we gotta take you out here. What would be our pleas? Like, why would we say we deserve to keep on living? Or why would, why do we deserve this life? And, you know, when I think about why, for me, the only whys are art and, like, the the physical um, tests and the physical um, just feats that we accomplish as our sports music or sports stars and 
just what they can accomplish with their human body. Like that, that is something that is art to me because it is, it's really inspiring when you put your mind to something and you focus your whole life on doing something. Uh, like Michael Jordan and all these like shackles, like these crazy people who have just done some phenomenal things. That's what I would say uh, is passion, and that's what I would say is is why we're alive and why why we're here. You know, but success, you know, every single time I get a smile, you know, and it's funny because it's a short little area, and people are they aren't too quick to stop. You know, if there's no one else standing there, they usually don't stop. Like, oh, no one's standing here. It must not be any good. But as soon as that first person stops, you know, that's when the crowds kind of form. But in a normal situation, you'll have a person walking in front of me, and at first they're like, what is this? They're so confused. And the eyebrow goes up. They kind of look to their friend, and then they start smiling. They kind of get it, and then they're gone. You know, So it's like a little smile machine. Everyone who walks by has a little smile on their face, and they got something to, to ponder about, something to show that a little engineering and a, a whole lot of time, you know, you can do, you can do what, what, what you set out to do and, you know, it just, it, hopefully it just shows people that it's possible. If you want something, you can get it. You just, you got to sacrifice and you got to be willing, willing to put in the time, yeah. you know. But that's success for me. Every time I can get a little smile or a little smirk, even if they don't take a CD or, you know, put in any money just to know that they, they kind of click and they kind of get it. And for the rest of the day, they might be pondering what my life is like and what, what, uh, <laughs> what my future holds. I, I imagine a lot of people that walk by are pretty envious because you followed your dream, right? This, this is kind of what you're doing. And I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's half and half. I get a lot of people who seem like they, uh, they, they're pitiful uh, of me or they pity me because, you know, I'm, I'm alone and I'm in this truck and it doesn't seem like it fits into the normal normal scheme of, of reality and so yeah I don't I don't think they are honestly a lot of them I think uh, the ones who get it and enjoy the music they can see and understand the sacrifices that went into play but a lot of the people who walk by just I think kind of think it's kind of silly it's like why well, do this I have an iPod that has you know yeah. 10,000 songs and I can play it whenever I want you're kind of you're not necessary anymore bro and I'm, like, I'm just gonna say that no song being played for iPod has given me goosebumps <laughs> like like you did like yeah, do you know what I mean like it's too, man. And I don't think people see that and I think it's a shame because we won't realize how little we've invested into our new artists until all the other ones are gone yeah. you know and we lost so many this year and imagine what's going to happen when Dylan's gone, Paul's gone, and Neil Young's gone. It's like all these superheroes, you know, we're going to realize there's no one left to fill their shoes. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things. We won't realize it until yeah. they're all gone. It's just how, how, how lucky we had it. You made a comment earlier saying that you felt like um, like out of touch for a while and you're like, what's wrong with me? I personally think that you're the one that's like in touch. <laughs> no, like it's true. Like it's, it's honestly like you're the one that's in touch and we're like the majority of other people are the one that's out of trust. Like you say, people look at you and are like, well, that's not normal. Like I want a house and a car and a 2.5 <laughs> kids and a husband. Like that stuff doesn't bring happiness and they don't realize that. Like I think people want what you've got but don't realize that that's what they want. Like they're all chasing something and they don't know what it is and they think it's going to be filled with mansions and and like you know Mercedes and stuff like that but they're going to be empty forever if that's the shit that they're chasing they they don't understand these material things will never fill that space that that void that they're missing and I I never wanted to travel until I started traveling and now I can't stop (laughs) it is the worst drug Zoe would love to settle I would love to settle have a base and do trips but like I I think females are just more nesting in nature though like I just want a base somewhere and for my books. <laughs> yeah, no, that's understandable. I grew up as a roadie, so we were in yeah. a different city like every night. And after that, you know, different it's, cities, it's, different experiences. You're getting rich with experiences. It's a whole different type of wealth, right? And it's hard, hard to go back to a normal life after that. It just doesn't doesn't seem right. But you know, I miss traveling with my friends. That's that's kind of the 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 bittersweetness of the whole thing. Is like I have my freedom, and people see that. Uh, but uh, without the people around you, it's amazing, you know, how how easy it is to beat yourself up and, uh-huh. you know, when you don't have a support system around you. And especially a situation like this, you know, I put my heart and soul out there and I play for free. And a lot of times people ask me to leave. A lot of times people say, no, we don't want you here. And it just, it makes it feel so worthless. You put yourself out and it's just time and time again. And 
having cops kick me out. And it's, it's just like you wonder why you're doing it. It seems like you're really forcing people to to just sit back and enjoy and, and take a second out of their life. But everyone's so busy. Everyone's got a place to go, and that's another thing. Is like I'm not really a destination. I'm I'm completely out of their plan for the day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people they don't take the opportunity to to embrace the unexpected because mm -hmm. that is life and that is every every manner of fate you know that I've ever experienced came out of left field and you know sometimes uh, you got to be you got to be listening uh, to, to mother earth you know when she's telling you which way to go <laughs> but if you're not listening if you're too busy with where you think you're going you'll never understand where you're meant to be. yeah Man, thanks a lot. Really appreciate you sitting <laughs> down. Yeah, it was awesome. It's nice to have a conversation. Like I said, I live in a box truck. It's just nice to have you, people to chat with. You <laughs> are absolutely an inspiration to us. Uh, and I hope that the people watching this, that they'll see this and they'll know to, to keep the passion alive and follow their dreams. Yeah, man, likewise. You guys keep doing, like, you have a great opportunity to bring, bring, uh, bring people into a viewpoint, you know, that you only get to experience when you travel. Because when you're stuck in your same hometown, it's uh, like I wish that's why I, I really enjoy I'm looking forward to virtual reality and 360 video it's like if I had a passion it would be to travel the world and uh, film like these beautiful beautiful places yeah. where people could just go there and, and experience and not even the beautiful places but like a uh, like a homeless shelter like a back alley you know show what it's like to be surrounded by people shooting up heroin and you know, get people to experience this life that's around them because we're so sheltered in our daily routine that you just you stop growing so what you guys are doing has a great opportunity to share that knowledge with the world. we're on the same path <laughs> for that. thanks a lot we're, so we can find you at, at the wandering the wandering madman dot com yes. also on facebook yeah, as well facebook yeah. and all, all that so good you're stuff. gonna be here for a little bit then you're headed to hawaii yeah i'll be all here right. for about uh about uh four more months and then it's a little up in the air but hawaii okay. is looking pretty good you, that people can find you online yeah they can find out where you're gonna be yes sir i got a gps yeah, track <laughs> <laughs> so you can follow me out there <laughs> And you live, so off, cool. um, you live off donations, right? Yeah, yep. I'd say about 95% of my income. I really don't get paid. I, it's not that I don't try. I contact every single major festival. I contact every major brewery, every like, farmer's market. And for whatever reason, it's just I, I don't have much luck selling myself. Yeah. I don't think it works well as an artist because you're I already assumed you're an alcoholic, sex craved, you know, crazy <laughs> yeah. man. Uh, when I try to promote myself, it doesn't work. I just sound conceited, you know. Mm. So, but when you have someone else saying, "Hey, mm. this guy is pretty cool," you know, it works a lot better. So, hopefully, in time, I might have some help. But right now, I just find busy sidewalks and I do my best to live on donations. So. And can we make donations on your website? Yeah, yeah, you can go Perfect. online. I also accept Chipotle gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> That's about my meals. That's the only place I can find cheap, good antibiotic-free chicken and stuff like go. that. And I was vegetarian for about a year and a half. I did all right. Are you guys vegan or anything? We're not. We, yeah. we, we support whatever people want to eat. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly. your choice. Do it the right way. We're all yeah. good with it. Yeah, yeah so that's awesome. We're yeah. pretty, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of what we do is, I guess, um, People can choose what way they want to go, and, and Luke will tell them how to be healthy about it. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty pretty agnostic in most things, and right dieting is one of them. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So you just we we're all about do what you like, just figure out the right way to do it. Yeah, you know? that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad this you're there to great. help people on their path, my friend. Thanks, nice my friend. <laughs> so guys, go to thewonderingmadman.com. You can uh, send him Chipotle gift cards, <laughs> or you can make donations <laughs> via PayPal. So let's keep the uh, let's keep the music alive. Let's keep the the passion alive. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. My brother, yeah, appreciate it. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs>